human influence on the climate system is clear. The scientific evidence is stronger than ever. Better and more observations. Improved understanding of the climate system response. Further development of climate models. All point in the same direction. Human influence on the climate system is clear. Many of these observed changes are unusual or unprecedented on timescales of decades to millennia. Ice cores contain an abundance of information about climate. Paleoclimate records show a close link between CO2 concentration and temperature. These trends are seen in current observations. Each of the last three decades has been warmer than all preceding decades since 1850, and the first decade of the 21st century has been the warmest. We're able to demonstrate that the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere has increased by 40% since pre-industrial times, mostly as a result of human activities, and that the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are higher than they've been for the last 800,000 years in Earth history. The effects of global warming are most evident in some of the coldest places on the planet. Ice sheets and glaciers worldwide are losing mass, permafrost is thawing, and the snow and sea ice cover in the Arctic is decreasing. The most visible signs of warming can be found in the Arctic. Arctic sea ice extension has shown a downward trend since 1980. A downward trend is also observed at the Greenland ice sheet. The amount of mass that's lost in Greenland is about six times as much as what was observed 10 years ago. The observed changes in the cryosphere have serious implications. With less snow and ice, more of the sun's energy is absorbed by the ocean and land surface. This is one of the powerful climate change feedbacks that influences the whole climate system. Based on multiple lines of independent evidence, the ocean is warming. The warming of the ocean will continue even if we stop the atmospheric CO2 concentrations to increase because the time scale of the ocean circulation which connects the surface to the deep ocean is very large in the sort of hundreds and thousands of years. There are four major contributors to sea level rise. Ocean heat uptake, melting of glaciers, reduction of ice sheets and changes in water storage on land. Improved scientific understanding has made scientists able to make a consistent sea level rise budget. Over the 20th century as a whole, the dominant contributions are ocean thermal expansion and the contribution from the loss of mass from glaciers. Sea level has risen by about 19 centimetres by 1900 to 2010 and it's continuing to rise we will have to adapt to sea level rise. Our understanding of the climate system relies on combining observations and studies from many different scientific disciplines. With the help of supercomputers, this knowledge can provide climate projections for the future. Climate models play an absolutely crucial role in this assessment report. They are the only tools that allow us to say something quantitative about the future.
Historically, climate prediction has started with predicting weather, the atmosphere, then we included the ocean, and now we're at the point where we include every component in the Earth system, including the carbon cycle and the chemistry. So that allows us to have a really comprehensive view of all the relevant processes for future climate change. Climate change projections require information about future emissions or concentrations of greenhouse gases, aerosols and other anthropogenic drivers. A new set of scenarios was used to project the cumulative CO2 emissions in the future. Model simulations employing the RCP scenarios tell us we have a choice. We have a choice to live in a world in which climate change is limited to less than 2 degrees Celsius or in a world that is warmer than 4 degrees Celsius. Climate models employing the RCP scenarios provide policy relevant information on a regional level. For the first time, Working Group 1 has developed an atlas of global and regional climate projections which allows decision makers to see how climate might change in their regions. This can facilitate more informed decisions on adaptation strategies. We have three key messages. A warming in the climate system is unequivocal. That is based on the observations and the multiple lines of independent evidence. The second message is human influence on the climate system is clear. This is resulting from the combination of model simulations with the observed climate change. The third message is that continued greenhouse gas emissions cause further climate change and constitute a multi-century commitment in the future. Substantial and wide-ranging impacts of climate change have occurred across the world. Climate change is already affecting ecosystems, human health, freshwater resources and agriculture. Over the past few decades, yields of major agricultural crops have not increased as much as they would have without climate change. Climate change poses risks for food security in the future. Ongoing warming and acidification of coastal waters have impacts on marine ecosystems. Climate change has affected both the land and ocean species. We find the species are changing, moving places, migrating, and in the case of our trees, you find a higher rate of mortality. The main message from all of these observed impacts is that many features of ecosystems in the economy are very sensitive to changes in climate. And when we look forward to the possibility of changes in climate that are much larger than the ones we've already seen, the risk of much greater impacts is also very clear. Extreme climate events tell us a lot about current vulnerability and exposure of ecosystems and societies. Society at large is actually more vulnerable and more exposed to climatic extremes even in the current climate than one might expect. And that tells us something about this, the challenge of moving forward into a changing climate. Future greenhouse gas emissions and land use change will determine the magnitude of future climate change. Risks for people, societies, economies and the environment increase with further warming. Mitigation can reduce risks.
The growth of greenhouse gas emissions has increased over the last decades. Global greenhouse gas emissions are growing at an accelerated pace. This is largely due to combustion of fossil fuels in the energy and industry sectors. Growing economic output causes most of the increase in emissions. The other important driver is population growth, but its influence on emissions has remained roughly stable. The policy makers, they refer in their policy to the two degree target as a kind of a focal point. And we provided the information and the underlying requirements to achieve this two degree target. In the long run, GHG emissions from energy supply need to go down towards zero. Advances in performance and cost have made renewable energy a fast-growing category in energy supply. In 2010, about a fifth of the total global emissions came from industry. About a quarter of GHG emissions come from agriculture and forestry. Deforestation is a large source, but the related emissions have been declining in recent years. Land use is a unique sector that offers many different options to reduce emissions and also ways to draw carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Let me take the case of Africa, where the energy system is not yet in place. There is two options. You can go for fossil or you can go for clean energy aspect. Electrifying the African continent with clean renewable energy would have co-benefits. Reducing the use of wood and other biomass for cooking and heating could reduce pressure on local resources and also improve health through better indoor air quality. Working Group 3 would like to be a map maker. Wants to provide policy relevant information without being policy prescriptive. To give policymakers a way to overlook the whole landscape and provide information about the past performance and also to give them information what they could do in the future.